The vinyl record, invented in 1930, were molded and pressed discs that would use specially marked grooves to form a melody that would be read on a needle. This was the general public's go-to option in terms of listening to music for decades to come. Replacements would come and go such as cassettes, 8-tracks, CDs, and most recently online music streaming. Having a seemingly infinite amount of music at your fingertips would almost certainly be endgame in terms of what people would want in terms of music. So, of course nobody would want to go back to what are technically obsolete forms, right? Over a bizarre set of circumstances and factors, it would seem that vinyls would not only still be sold, but absolutely thrive after being on the market for over 90 years. But why is this the case? Why would people still invest in a massive collection on what is seen as unnecessary to the general public? We will find out why and more in our feature presentation. This is Rhythm and Grooves, Rise of the Records. first album you ever got? Oh my god, um, my first album I ever got was a anniversary pressing of Rush's 2112. I'm Jake Johan and I've been collecting vinyl about four and a half years now. I just checked, um, I have 67 uh, different albums in my collection. Because there is, personally, there's nothing better than just listening to a vinyl soundtrack and hearing my favorite bands through that is something, like, special. I actually don't know where this is. It's kind of frustrating. What are you trying to find specifically? Um, I'm looking for Death Grips because they have a limited pressing of an album I'd like to get. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I love supporting bands I like, and... Yeah, sure, it's cool being able to listen to uh, an album the second it drops in perfect fidelity, but record collecting, like hearing a brand new record of the same album, you just put it on and listen. I don't like to distract myself, I just like to be a part of the music, and those crackles and pops you hear in records definitely add to that. Its rise would slowly begin in 2006, and for the past 17 years would steadily be on the rise. Vinyls were mainly home to smaller artists and older established household names in music, but nowadays it's not uncommon for modern day musicians to release vinyls of their albums on the same day as their streaming and CD counterpart. My name is Stephanie and I own Spin Me Round, the record store in the Palmer Park Mall. I really don't think so because there's so many, Lana Del Rey. Lana Del Rey is coming out with a new album on the 24th of March, this month. And I pre-sold more copies of that than any other record. So I think people like that the new music is on vinyl. You know, the old music being on vinyl, that the nostalgic reason, yeah, that's great. But I think with the music of now being on vinyl, it's no longer nostalgia. It's like, it becomes just people's thing. Everybody has a thing. You know, reading, collecting, you know, cards or Star Wars or Star Trek. Some, everybody has a thing. And I think now a lot of people, their thing is vinyl. Vinyl records mean everything to me because then the music is yours. Music is meant to be enjoyed in a physical format. It's meant to be 12 by 12. It's not meant to be this little CD or this little tiny digital download. You're not supposed to rent it. You're not supposed to lease it. You're not supposed to pay a subscription for it. You're supposed to find what you love and buy it and own it forever. And a lot of it just sounds better. A lot of it just sounds better on vinyl because you get the highs and the lows that sometimes you don't get digitally or on a CD. Um, initially, the reason I wanted to collect records was just kind of like the novelty of it. My name is Dominic Richard. Uh, we are currently at Young Ones Records, which I am an employee at, and I've been working here for just over a year now.
it's not really something I thought I would be even like as remotely as passionate as I am now. It, it was really just like the novelty thing and it was just kind of cool to do at the time. I would say my record collection is maybe just short of 300 records right now. I am really drawn to like physical media in particular, like records and like Blu-ray movies. Um, and Young Ones has a massive supply of both music and film. Uh, why does it appeal to you personally? Um, there's a couple of reasons why it appeals to me. One, I really just like physical media. I like the tangibility of it. I like seeing things. But there's also like the, it's very ritualistic. Um, like, you know, picking out the record and like, like putting it on and cleaning it and everything. Um, and then like once you actually go to listen to it, you also have like all of the really cool artwork that it comes with. And unless you're like, unless you are thrifting, which sometimes you will lose out on some of that uh, artwork because it's not really there anymore. But like with some of the newer stuff, you get a lot of cool stuff to look at. While the medium has its fans and diehard collectors, there is a vast majority of those opposed to the popularity. Uh, people say it's a whole lot better. It's not. Instead of needing a small iPhone, you need a whole record player and a bunch of records. Hi, my name's Andrew Barr, and I've hated records since the day I was born. What is your least favorite part about vinyl? The size. They are ginormous, dude. This thing is ma bigger than my head. Bigger than my head. Right? Like, how am I gonna keep this? If you wanna skip songs, really can't, right? Am I always in the mood to listen to a whole album? No. Sometimes I'm just in the mood and I wanna hear the really sad song so I can cry to it. <laughs> I don't know, like, you can't really display vinyl because they look ugly, right? It's just a black disc with a little bit of art in the center. Like, that is not very appealing. Again, I think uh, I prefer physical media over anything on the internet because, like, for a variety of reasons. One, you get to see it, you get to touch it, um, you get to just, like, you get to bask in it. If you're as into music as a lot of people are, you can really appreciate vinyl as something to support your favorite artist, something to show your friends, something, it's just, for me, it's really nice to have this physical collection of media that represents my music taste sitting on a shelf. Yeah, it's like, this is what I love. Whether that's DVDs or CDs or vinyl, you're saying, this is what I love. And if you don't have this, what do you have? What vinyl lacks in general popularity, however, it makes up for with a strong and diehard community. A majority of the record collectors I talk to, they're some of the coolest people you'll ever meet. Talking to people, finding out what they love, looking through their collections and seeing what they used to love, helping them find records that they loved 30 years ago that they can't find now. I just love the customer interaction and seeing what everyone loves and what they used to love, what they love now. I mean, it's like any other hobby, like people are gonna be really passionate about it um, and they're gonna be like really humble about it and want to talk to other people who are also collecting records and want to learn from those people about other things that they can get. Would you have anything remotely positive to say about my records and for just for people who collect them? Uh, Shape Records, I mean, this is cool, right? And so that's why Shape Records are my favorite is because I don't think any other medium could do this, right? So this is taking something that's unique about a vinyl record and adapting it to our modern times. And I think vinyl should adapt. I don't think we should stay where it was, where it's just that boring old record. I think definitely adapting uh, is a benefit and bring it into the new age, right? Like having like the younger generation see something that our grandparents used and like making it cool. So yeah, honestly, it's just crazy just how far vinyl's gone in just like the past couple of years. Hi, my name is Sebastian Buba, and I am the creator of this mini documentary. 
So I originally created the documentary because I just found the entire idea of vinyl just like very interesting in today's modern setting of how it's just this like decades and decades old technology that was like for the longest time just considered to be obsolete only to just come back like after years and years of that obsolescence, lessons and it's mostly just because of like the following that it built up over time and you get like the diehard collectors you get like the amazing community i love the fact that after 44 years or so like it was able to rise and like actually do well and sell the most it's had in such a while of course, it's nowhere near as much as it did when it was at its peak. We actually still have a long way for that, but I think that's a beautiful thing. We don't know how big this is going to get. I think it's stable. I think it's going to continue to be stable because I'm a firm believer in physical media. I love having a physical thing I can hold. And especially with like streaming services, just they can randomly just wipe out albums. I've had it happen to me so many times. When vinyls sell the most they have in 44 years, I'm cool with it because we have only really gotten shaped records like as a modern thing and it, I feel like the market for it has expanded as more people are getting into it and hopefully we're going to produce more cool things like this. And for what it is, I'm just here for the ride. I'm, I can't wait to see where it goes. I've been wanting to collect more video game soundtracks that are vinyl. I want to collect more of my favorite bands, hopefully to see what special editions they have. So, in all honesty, I'm just looking forward to see what comes next in the strange case of vinyl.